Yo, greetings once again, family. This is Adrian Green, the Bajan Green. Alongside my brethren, the Bajan Farai. Right. What's going on, Farai? Right? I will, uh, it's brother. Yeah, it's on, yeah. like, yeah. Thing. I know I sound like myself. Yeah, it's on, yeah, yeah, it's on two tuna. Uh, you know, so you want a little alas or something in the throat. Yes, yes. Or a little syrupy bush or something. I'm sticking my throat, you know what I mean? I want some honey and lime. Okay. But you know, we're in the boiler room and I can't miss it. Even yeah. Even though I'm feeling so hot. I so you know, so we already know, you know, show me up. So I mean, I, 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 I go a little bit of corner. You cannot afford to stop going, boss. I, I say, you, you cannot afford to stop You can remember the day when we do the great scorcher. I welcome the scorcher. Oh, yeah. Yes, welcome yes, to the boiler room. Yeah. Right place for you. A scorcher. Yeah. And a scorcher. In the boiler room. And a scorcher in the boiler room. It's a good fit, man. It yeah. Works. Yeah, man. Much respect and yeah, blessings. the invitation. Give thanks. So, yeah, generally, I know you from basically the Catch a Fire, Catch a Fire series and stuff like that, yeah. But in... in Vibing before we come live, I see I go a whole lot of side of you that I didn't know about, brother. You really mm -hmm. you're on a different hooks and a different level of thinking. But tell the people about Catch a Fire and then we can get into all the other bases. Flow with the mood. All right, well, greetings to everybody watching the program, the podcast. Catch a Fire is really a, a, a subsidiary, a part of Inferno TV, Inferno Entertainment. That's yeah. the you know the the broader thing inferno television inferno yeah. entertainment yeah so uh, as of right now if you if you log on to facebook youtube mm -hmm. instagram any of these social media platforms you just type in inferno tv yeah. barbados you can yeah. find us um mm -hmm. catch a fire is really a program produced by inferno tv oh, right yeah. um so catch a fire we would have done that last year we would have spoken to a number of people entrepreneurs mainly mm -hmm. that was one of the main criteria for getting on the program in terms of having your own structure be it um, teaching, be it selling clothes, be it whatever. The really? main thing was for you to be, um, obviously, you know, a creative. Independent. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, to get that message across to the younger people right. that it is possible to survive without having a nine to five, you know? Right, right, um, it's, it's, it's that kind of vibe. So um, that's pretty much it. Inferno TV is all about media, it's about information, disseminating information to the public, mm -hmm. and, and not just what we would, you know, what we've become accustomed to in mainstream right, media. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. we try to tap into culture, right. um, we try to. Um, tap into a lot of the topics that are global topics right now. Right. You know, holistic medicine, um, you know, in terms of black power, especially yeah. black people across the world right now right. Are, are right now energized. You know, they're, they're supporting black businesses. The entrepreneurship is really alive again now. Um, okay. Younger people are really taking that route. So that's pretty much what Inferno Television is dedicated to. Right. You know, providing a platform for entrepreneurship, positivity. Um, anything mainly black too. I won't mm. say that straight off. That you know. No, I find that that might go a little straight back with certain other races. That's all right too. I don't mind. That's you don't fine. Mind. Yeah, because I want to make it clear that I come tonight. Obviously, you know, to rap with you, to you. Yeah. You know, I want to get that opportunity. But the main reason really is to, you know, clear some air so people can be, you know, definitive about what it is that we are dealing with in front of television. And when we put out our information, when mm. we when we speak. We're really trying to dedicate what we're doing, our time and our energy to, yeah, black people, people of African descent, whoever you want, but whatever yeah. makes you comfortable. So you don't want to call here again because they get featured by in front of TV, as you would say too? Or, of course. Yeah. I mean, once it is that what we're talking about would be something that is going to be a benefit long way, to you, people. Right, right, yeah, right, for right. sure. Okay, yeah. so that's, so it's that's not a really, positive voice, eh? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like some people might hear that, and the over two and over, you know, people is here. I want, you know, you might say, Yeah, I want to decide. I hear one thing. There's call me a racist. Racist racist too. Racist. I like all races. So, are you racist? I've had, that, I've had that in public, you know, where people would, would see me and say, But Scorch, I might let you work. But what happened is, got these racist tones, you know. Mm. Um, and what obviously, do they, what do you think they mean by that? What they mean by that is, um, if you hear a man say, like, I, I you know, do music and I, you know, yeah. into a lot of different things. We can get to that. Mm. But I is one of these people where I tell you straight, if you got fifty dollars for it, mm. you always yeah. And I think forty nine ninety nine should go to a black business. Mm. That's if you was a black man. That's common sense. Mm. I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, some people take that to mean racism, whatever. But if if an Indian man or a Chinese man or a white person, mm. you know, some people live by your order where they support them. They want that right. right. The wrong. Jews is do that, you yeah. You can see them you know, you stack your pictures. If yeah. you've got somebody who is a good virgin of yours or a good sister of yours, mm. and they have something coming up, and they can utilize your services, but they refuse to for whatever reason. Mm. You know, they may go another friend who's a cameraman too. So don't let's just look at it in a small nutshell. Right, right. But I'm saying that they person should feel good. Yeah. 
to yeah. know that they can call you and not call you and say, but I can use for it because for it's my friendly level to get the job free right. or get a discount. But because they take pride, yeah, in supporting a brethren, supporting a sistering, that's the code that he wants to live by in Barbados. And oh, not feel me, ashamed about it. Let me let me jump let me jump in here and play a devil. My devil's oh, advocate. Oh, here he comes. But just because a person is a black person, that don't mean my brethren or my sister is just another black person. What makes the skin color or the race of the person something that I should base my economic decisions on? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, if you... If, if, you, it, if it's my family member or my friend, I, I, you yeah, know, of pe course people can understand that. Why would, why would you say then that uh, I should make that decision based on race? Well, because, I mean, for me, for me, it doesn't matter if I know some person personally or not. Mm -hmm. Because I see... Um, I literally think uh, as a collective, mm -hmm. you know? So if I go down Swan Street and I see a man set up vending, like whether I know he from birth, it don't matter to me. What I see before me is some person who is like me, who look like me, mm -hmm. like an hustle, doing a thing. So if it is a $2 and to bear pack and that's just to make that man hustle go wrong, why not do it? I mean, I ain't got no heat. Well, you know? what was your connection to him? I ain't got no connection to him other than the fact that he looks like me. Mm -hmm. He's my brother. By that regard, whether or not he is some person who is a relative, blood relative to me, it doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, want, you know, people tend to use that a lot where they try to make it into a very personal relationship between the consumer and, you know, the person who's running the business. Mm -hmm. And we often only find that comparison when it comes down to this kind of conversation. Supporting black business. So you don't want to, yeah, so let me, let me get yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so I, clear. I, I, want, I want to understand up that last point you made. Mm -hmm. the last, you're, you're saying that it only comes down to this kind of conversation when we are talking about supporting black businesses. Mm -hmm. Are you saying, are you arguing then that this is commonplace for everybody except black? Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm, what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to the whole of Barbados is that it is only unfortunate that small businesses are structured in a way where you're liable to back the owner when you're going there. That's unfortunate because I don't know who won KF Shepherd. I don't know. I don't know if but I you shop there before. Of course I've I've shot about yeah. shop at Kia. Yeah, Shepherd. Yeah. Yes, I shop at Kia Shepherd, it's true. Like I know of Halu by his reputation, by being a good businessman, etc. I have read articles in the paper. Now if I take my youth to Shafet or whatever the case is, I ain't gonna see Halu. Mm. I may. May. I've never seen him. I may. He may have it by chance, but he ain't booked there. He ain't got time for that. He got people, he got staff, he got a structure in place that his business can run whether or not he's there or not. You understand? So even if you want to beg her look for a little deal or to get a little special, you a quart short, he can't help you because he ain't anywhere around there. He ain't from the compound. And who is there does not have the authority, really. But unless they feel like this uh, personally, you know, unless that cashier said, well, I got a little spirit change here. Don't dig me. I can put that change for you. No but what? a small businessman, no. A small businessman may feel inclined because he may tell himself, well, really and truly, you know, I'm reliant on this business. And it's just different with a small business. You know, it's just different where people would adopt a more relaxed approach. A man can be your business as a small business and, you know. He's short five. You know, he's short five. And he may be a regular customer too. You feel propelled to get our person a deal or, you know, to show some love. And there ain't nothing wrong with that either. That's mm -hmm. cool. Or that's, for me, that's the old way. You know, sometimes your people would often barter you know, before, you know, in the money. But you, know, you so will also money. tell the same um, people that are dealing with this issue is that they got to pay it forward. Because, you know, sometimes a man will get a deal mm -hmm. and things like that, or for a man, but he, he know for somebody to come back to, you know, like someone he partners out there and he hustle. Mm -hmm. And he got to, he know, say, well, oh, we're like, all right, friend, we can draw it for it. A, a, a reference here, the DVD, man. Mm -hmm. The AC how these men is more. If he ain't got, he'll, yo, go and check my man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm But some men, some men be like, nah, man, I ain't got no man, come back and check me when they got it. Eh? They don't want to check for the one. Eh? So, mm -hmm. and doing that, you got to be real, like, skeptical. There was, you just got to really watch how the, the road that you're trod, you know, because some things they don't want to pay it forward to the next man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's more like, we get this greed thing, you know, where it's like, Everybody want to make the most money for that day. Mm -hmm. So the money checking for the next man, even make a dollar for the day. Because you know, if you got twenty men out there, you know everybody can't be eating a big food. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know what I mean? It, it, it goes share equally. And you go and put down some men here because some men just tell yourself like, yo, see me right now, like, yo, yeah, for my seven checking for nobody else. So even though you might got that vibe, you guys, you can only support this man. But I mean, you might be doing checking for nobody else. Some uh, things. This happened. But I, I mean, again, 
it's still that's that's the person right to what you feel. Mm. Like if I the business man <coughs> of my shop, I ain't obligated to get any deals, I ain't obligated to do nothing besides mm. provide the products that you advertising. Mm. Really, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty. So I don't really want to stress too much on the deal part because I think I find that is again that's be relative to when we come to dealing with you or not or whatever the case may be. You feel mm. me? Talking to Mike a little bit more. Uh, yeah, but for the most for the most part, my thing is really to um Show that interest. Mm. Show that interest in. Show that interest in supporting black business full stop. If we if we adopt that culture, that's one of the main things that I find can start to, you know, see a turnaround. And I've already seen a turnaround. You know, like before you, you would have seen um an overemphasis on, on people trying to find jobs, etc. No with with the lack of the availability of jobs. People, people yeah, you know, it's like necessity. Mm. You know? Um which is a good thing. In terms of the rising entrepreneurship that we're seeing around the island now, um, from the women in the food vans to the salons, um, to people, you know, making a hustle, so to speak, and being brave enough to, you know, take that step and say, well, I want to try my own thing. It could be some boy selling snacks by primary school. It doesn't really matter. You know, the, the argument in Barbados has always been, or for a long time, was that the black people, black people don't make good business people. You know, they always talk about how many flourishing black businesses there were on Roebuck Street and Hall. How all the they all went went down mm -hmm. over a period of time. What's your take on that? On what, on, on what exactly? On the the stereotype mm -hmm. that black barbarians <gasps> have not made good business people. Well, I mean, I would say in, in business, he has got two two people in talk about business. And if you want to talk about the Belgian public, I think we need to give the Barbadian public a, a round of applause for mm -hmm. being good consumers, because that's part of business too, mm -hmm. right? So um, that is the first thing that I would say that Barbadians, black Barbadians especially, have been over the years good consumers. But if you want to talk about the overall attitude of black business, we've got to talk about a number of variables. And one of those variables obviously would be, I think, education. Um, the education system over the last 50 years, um, as you would say, I think kind of brought people away from entrepreneurship into a more attitude of, of um, I would say, getting your degrees and so on to be able to find work, to build careers. Um, as opposed to the thing that you're talking about, Robert Street, all of the way, Weymouth and so on, that was like a black business capital. You know, I spoke to um, one of the most prominent black businessmen in Barbados recently. Who's that? Um, this is, um, I, can, I can call it, Raul Branca. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he's somebody who, who would have gone to Common Mirror, um, lived in the inner city, grew up in Emerton, and he would have painted stories to me of um, what Robert Street, what subtle street and what some of these inner city areas in town would have looked like in terms of black business. Mm -hmm. You know, people doing welding, um, industry, the tailors and so on, the dressmakers. Um, and then in asking him what would have changed that culture, you know, he's saying to me, um, we're talking about a period in time where, you know, our grandparents and our great grandparents would have endured hot days, you know, corns in the hand from working hard and doing that type of work. And an opportunity was afforded after independence to quote unquote elevate, you know, to go a different road, you know, you're building the civil service in the island. So that's the direction where people would have gone coming out of hawking, coming out of agriculture and so on. So, I mean, there are a lot of variables if we're going to talk about black business in Barbados. You can't just come and just pipe there and check in a box because then you've got to talk about things like generational wealth and all these different things. You understand where I'm coming from? So if we want to talk about that, I figure that's something that is a separate issue on its own if we can be talking about the culture and the attitude of, of, of black people when it comes to business. We've got to be willing to take all the other things into account. You know, the infrastructural support, you know, all those different things we've got to take into account. So, all right, like you saying black business and people are entrepreneurs. A lot of people had a problem around the holiday season mm -hmm. with the hawkers, with the bus stand, playing the trade and stuff like that. Yeah. At the same time, you know, you got people that can do a trade. But the same thing, you know that people got other people passing there, you know, they don't really care about what you're doing there, you know what I mean, until they need you. Because, you know, a hawker is, you only got a hawker when you need something from a hawker. So when you look at how they was keeping the surroundings apart, people know that coming to support your business mm -hmm. as a black business, mm -hmm. how they was keeping the area, mm -hmm. you don't really feel you would have had an issue with that there. I mean, like, going to some person, you say, hey, child, we're wrong here, real dirty, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. When I really go check myself and clean up boat here, mm -hmm. I say can't yeah, deal with it. Where you talking about exactly? By the um, Fairchild Street bus stand, I mean, it was. Uh, uh, the, from, I think it was from 
done by Chinese all the way. Right. right. When they moved the, 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 the hawkers and there. I think it was moving them out of Swan Street. There's also doing Swan Street and things. But you were saying you had, a, certain time, you had a problem with how the vendors were keeping the area? The area, yeah. Right. That, they're, that they're working. So you're mm-hmm. going to come in a box and you see you out there selling. I mean, look up on the ground, big Michael seat, all snack box and all kind of thing, trouble up on the ground and water dirty and things like that. Mm-hmm. You also go and tell people that, look, at you go out three, you, you, you doing your business, but you go out carry the place a kind of way if you want to attract customers a kind of way. Even what other people was going there and buying, mm-hmm. some people was overlook things, you know. Just get what you want, let me get from where you don't really care, but me know I see it in a different So you felt, you felt you supported the, the moving of the vendors at that time? I ain't support the, the moving of the vendors, but the cleaning up part, keep mm-hmm. it clean. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I ain't gonna come by your house to, to eat food here, Jen, and you go play up on the, on the table at some point, you know, you don't, you go, oh, yeah, all this play here, okay. you go wash it, clean so it. So you wasn't one of them people who was like just totally supporting the vendors and um, balling out that they were being unfair. I, you saw another side. There's an other side there too, okay. you know what I mean? We are, like, a lot of people speaking on that too. You know? mm-hmm. They wasn't just saying, like, yeah, I will defend you. Because you can't just jump in and say, like, yeah, I will you because you get on fear. You understand? Even though you get on fear, you can speak on that. But then, no, you also got to do something for me, like, yo, keep the place clean. You got to pay up on that, Squadron? Um, and you know, the, 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 the you used to work in the van stand, not cutting you, you used to work in the van stand. Yeah, so you yeah, know yeah, what you're yeah, you yeah. talking about. I mean, about. I got to take this opportunity to say, say like, big respect to. Um, now that you mentioned the van stand, all the vendors in the van stand, the van driver is the. You asked the man, yeah, and you should yeah. talk up on a regular slim rust. The man came in. There's one. Man, yeah. I think, I think in the moment you come down through the track. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's my one. man. Yeah, yeah. respect to one. Yeah, and that's it. That's a man that watch. Yeah. My feet, yeah. man, so always tell me every time you see me, yo, for right. Much respect, but mm-hmm. yo, bless that's it. That's one that you're talking about. Yeah, man, sure. much respect to that. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, about, about, I mean, keeping the place clean. Tongue is a, a, a place where I could tell you from being in Tongue that um, it's not easy to keep. The environment in Tom you could probably keep your immediate, you know, that square where you're operating from. You could probably control your space, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but when I look around Tom really and truly, um, yeah, you know, we got issues with, that need to be cleaned up and stuff. But to be real, Farai, the issue with the vendors and the hawkers, we don't really promote that vending culture in Barbados. I don't feel the authorities enjoy to see the vending culture. That's saying you got to enjoy to see because it's look confused to an extent where you have, you know, all these people laying in the streets, etc. But realistically, realistically, mm-hmm. I ain't the city. I ain't the city. And when I travel sometimes, that's why I see, you know, some designated areas for vending. But everything gotta be with order. You know, and if you look at that situation where you had a situation where you were saying to the vendors, go and apply for a license. But when you go to apply for a license, the ministry is telling you, well, we're renewing the licenses at this time. But you got somebody who was getting the license renewed for five years, seven years, eight years, nine years. So if be real, these are things that, you know, we got to talk about the bureaucracy in Barbados and the right to it. You know what I mean? My part is just that, that one part doing it, but I know it's a lot more yeah, to it. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's yeah, a lot yeah, more. And the fact, too, that you're setting up, you setting up selling cabbage and carrots in front of some place that sell these things from cold storage. Like, all these things that we got to look at realistically. Like that's always I always look at things. They got some people say they got two sides. It's more than two sides. There's enough different variables that you just gotta look at if you if you look into the Daisaka issue and try to be as fair as possible in the way that you're looking at things. The other side, which is another side you now, is that the government would have provided, you know, buildings, markets yeah, for the vendors to, to go and play the trade or whatever the case is. But as a vendor, you want traffic. So that is an option, yes to make the place look good and to get the people off the road so it's not an eyesore. But it's not a good option business-wise for the people who go, you know, go there, pay that rent, etc. because they need traffic. So you, you know, so it's got so to find a way to balance why, it. Right? Why, why getting is that business mm-hmm. and black business mm-hmm. is something that you're passionate about, something that is, is dri- driving your particular enterprise, your passion for black business. What you want to understand now really is why Way. Is, is it, it that you want to get rich or don't <gasps> train? Mm-hmm. Is it that you just one of them people who's get a trail out of being your own boss? What why? Why? What is it for you? I What's mean, the motivation? That that's a good question. Um if you can talk about black business, um I see business. You know, take away the word black, because that's tend to 
confuse people, make people move funny, yeah, right? So let me, let me, take, tell you, let me just there. talk no. business, mm. right? Let me just talk business right now. For the I can come back to black, though. What are you talking no about? Problem, business? No problem, no problem. Just for, for business, the purpose of this point, though. Yeah. Um, business. Um, economics, whether we want to admit it or not, is really weird power lays. Like, if you want new equipment to shoot this show, you know, Unless somebody donate it to you, that person still gotta get the financing to donate the equipment. It gotta come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Regardless of it coming out the manufacturer office or wherever in New York, you wherever, pay for what you want. somebody yeah. gotta pay for it. Yeah. So economics is something that um you no know, people don't wanna talk about economics because uh, you know, as soon as you talk about economics, they figure man, you're talking about money and this thing and that thing. Not just that yeah. too, not mm -hmm. cutting you, but a lot of people don't understand, overstand economics. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't overstand it mm -hmm. to that extent. I'm not just know like, look, it got in to sell. I can sell it, make some money. Mm -hmm. That's it. But you know, there's other there's a lot of other things mm -hmm. that go along with that there too. Mm -hmm. To help make you a living. Uh, and then they got economics in two senses of the word. They got economics as in the study that people go to get a degree in mm -hmm. economics, mm -hmm. and then they have economics in the other sense of the word that we're talking about. You know, the transfer of funds and trade and mm -hmm. on a basic level. Mm -hmm. When you say economics, you're talking about economics, economic theory, or are you talking about trade and industry and to me, to me, it's all, to me, to me, it's all combined. Because okay. what my, my 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 main point, my main point is that as a liberator, for us to um, cause it makes no sense complaining about the issue unless you have the solution. So if it is that we need to build a school for us, we need to make sure that we have our resources pooled together. We need to make sure we got our economic house in order, you know, legally, all these different things to go forward and, and transact and do business the same way that other people who got the schools were able to do it. So, I mean, they've shown us, and if we choose to take inspiration, that's why I say, let me take a really word black for this point, because I love the Muslim culture, and I love white people, and I love the Chinese and then people, all them people, this move, you hear me? Because at the end of the day, the people are very self-reliant, and not from a, a selfish standpoint, mm -hmm. not from a selfish standpoint, from a very holistic, collective viewpoint of realizing that you may be a white man or I may be a white man, but I see myself as part of a, a total race of people, you know? and. Part of our trait is to dominate and to acquire and to own and to build and to leave behind. That is a trait of the white man. You agree that that is a trait of I the white man? I don't know if that's unique to white people or to, well, to Europe. Well, it may not be unique to Europe, but I'm sure that you can find in percentages where generational wealth has been acquired, where it's lasted over a number of years, that we can agree that that is a trait of the European, that is a trait of the Indian, that is a trait of the Chinese. You can see it in but terms of the Japanese. That's a, I mean, I mean, so I mean it's, it's obvious to me. Well, the Jews is, is it's really to show you that. Certain it's obvious to me. There's one of the things that I would I would jump in and use your own argument against you where mm -hmm. you're real, you must really put things in historical perspective and understand mm -hmm. the, the, um, the context in which you're speaking mm -hmm. and maybe from a narrow, short, Cited perspective, it may appear that way, mm -hmm. you know, as though this is something that wow, Europeans really have the, the market cornered on unity, but on a broader perspective, it may not be true. Mm -hmm. And on a historical perspective, mm -hmm. it may only be true for a narrow period of history. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, short time, but you see, at the end of the day, if we're looking to engage youth in 2017, I can't go and tell them about Mansa Musa, who was the richest man to ever live. That was an African. I could get there eventually, but I need to be able, in this present point in time, to use realistic examples. Al Fala School down there, Kensington Lodge. Let's use that as an example of a group of people who have come to Barbados over, let's say, 80, 90, 100 years with a plan. Their plan is that our culture is Islam, Muslim, whatever you want to call it, and we want to ensure that a vast majority of our descendants, of our children, have an opportunity to learn our language, learn education our way. You feel me? Mm -hmm. No, there's nothing wrong with that. It ain't, there, ain't wrong with that. But this is a school that functions. This is a school that again top marks in the common entrance exam. Got students in the top ten, along the other private schools, Wills and Providence, and you name it. Al Fala, right there in Kensington, New Lodge, or wherever it is, short there. Oh, so for me, what it is that we? Because we, we know coming off fresh of a, an issue last year where we had a Rastafarian um, couple that went through turmoil in the courts for trying to homeschool children and all these different things. 
-hmm. And then you had a situation where like, people don't want to talk with these things, Adrian, but I was present at the meeting and you were fully aware that the um, Nation of Islam, who is also a group here functioning, doing their own thing, setting their order, building their own structure, you know, and they're doing that amidst all the red tape that we talk about in Barbados, amidst all the confusion that we talk about at the Ministry of Education, they're able to function. To put things in place. Get their thing in place. You gotta get 50 papers saying the problem. So, and get back to you when they got them 50 so papers. So when you're talking about business, you're talking about organization. But that is business. But the, the whole thing, a lot, a lot of people, mm -hmm. you see with the, with the you and thing, that's the thing, you know, a lot of people only jump in, you know, the facts that them see in the newspaper, you know, a lot of these people don't know the rasters that kind of, you know, remember, you know, rasters always get blamed, so when you, when you lock up there years ago, you say, if you see a raster man walking, coming down, you go to kitchen garden, you go to watch it, you go to the site, <laughs> like, it's taking me to these people that are kind of here, in Barbies, that's it, and you should see all along. Organizing black people, right? Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things. It can be done. Mm -hmm. It can take a lot of work, a lot of work, but it can be one of the hardest things that you ever come from. You, you can see, you can see it happening though. It can happen. Anything is a I mean, right now, now, I mean, right now, as we hear right now, if you right now, no, I you can't don't see, see it happening. It. No, I can't see. Where, it do, it. where do you see it happening? I real talk. It might happen down the road, but me as a my member, you know, I depend on Jar Earth for several years. Mm -hmm. These say that. You know what I mean? Because there's too much divisiveness in communities. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your house bigger than mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You understand? You are woman look bad among these kind of things. These little frivolous things is met. This cause a lot of commotion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of yard full new um, noise and things. Mm -hmm. So in, in the midst of all that noise, everything that you try to lift up is then always get pushed down, especially in certain communities in Barbados. You see a different scorcher? Yeah, I see it, I see it very differently. I see. I see tremendous growth. Like, I know right now, obviously, a lot of the programs, a lot of the, um, the platforms that are out there right now are there, obviously, to identify issues. You know, but Adrian, I can be honest with you, I'm feeling real good right now about what you see happening in Barbados. Well, you're, you're one of the few people that here say so, so, so <laughs> tell me more. Well, tell me what Scorch is seeing that the average Beijing is not seeing that causes Scorch to feel so positive. Well, what, I'm, what I'm seeing right now, first of all, is that... Um, Two things mainly, that two two of the the biggest pillars that the quote unquote system. You know, you know, you hear the Rasta man burn Babylon mm -hmm. and burn up the system and thing. Yeah. Explain right. that. For not not again. Explain this Babylon. Cause some people just see me think that Babylon mean police. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand. It's a system that we like, like Rasta is talking it's, about. It's, Babylon is is a word that I I try not to use because. If you say Babylon negatively to some people, they will look at your life crazy because Babylon was a great empire, you know. But in recent times, you know, it's been come to, you know, as something negative in terms of Babylon. Yes, referring to the system, government, police, the court system, that whole vibe, you know what I mean? Um, it could even extend to Babylon food, you know. Babylon is just, yeah. But my thing is with that now is that the two main things that I find the system um, have been using... Um, in colonial territories for a number of years, uh, from as far back as slavery or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, religion and the education system. Like you don't know, everybody know that in Barbados and in the Caribbean, the, the church is close to the schools and everything. Right. You know, right. we know what the plan was in terms of the structure that would have been set out, <coughs> how the island would have been mapped out, and the purpose of each of these institutions. Now, what I'm seeing in 2017 is that there's a new generation of people who who are not interested in the old way of doing things. And that whole, that grip that the system had on, on, on the psyche of our young people is disappearing slowly. And with that, other behavioral traits are going to disappear and we need to be prepared for that. You know, for most people, oh, that is a cause for alarm. That is a crisis. The failure of the church and the failure of the educational system means the children will become gangsters and thugs and killers and murderers and fornicators and thieves. Well, well, I mean, if I was, if I was, uh, I mean, granted, I don't like to bash the church because my grandfather was a pastor and nobody church real good, which is why it is that I've adopted certain views on religion and church and so on. We could get to that later on if you want to. But let's say I'm a reverend or I'm somebody who is trained or spent my life studying theology, whatever the case may be. That too is a business. That too is my career. So that depends on just like a doctor 
needing clients to come to him, patients to come to him to keep his career going, the same way a reverend or somebody would express concern that the church is losing a grip on people. Don't forget the church duty or the church job is to go there and save people. You understand? Mm -hmm. Salvation. You know, go there and enlighten people to the right way to walk and accept. The, you know, that's the vibe of not just the church, that's the vibe of religion per se. To spread their gospel, whether you live in Tibet, you can get your version of, of what Tibetans is David. You born in India, you can get and the believers and the clients. You understand? But yeah, but yeah, if you want to call it class, if you want to call it class. I can tell my view now the church. Sorry? I can tell my view now the church. Of course. Now, not disrespect you, but a lot of these priests and pastors and things, right? As far as I know, you see, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them men is bare greedy men. Mm -hmm. And just want to fill up the pockets of people offering. And they don't really care nothing about poor people, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Because years ago, you would get a pastor coming in the community and going to look for Sister Carolyn or Sister Baptiste or one of them there. Nowadays, it's hardly see these same pastors that trying to get a grip on society, them frightened. A lot of them got this mentality that, yeah, they want to do something, but you know what, I ain't going, in the, I ain't going on the audience, the gangsters don't want to be the big gangs and things, you don't want to day. But you thought you're supposed to die for the world of God, and you're supposed to fear thing that you got something built up, up in the marshal, up in the sky, and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So why are you scared? Why are you not going up there and telling youths what to do and, and, and showing them a different road? A lot of them like what them youths, you know, but I left them out there because you hear this a lot. I left the youths to the self, they are my child, I don't care name about them. But then you look at certain churches and certain meetings and things, you know, mm -hmm. you, like, the, like remember years ago, there was a lot of open air meetings. Mm -hmm. You don't see that really no more. They got a man to preach up Eagle Hall. Two people to be up there, Jack. You got to come in country, man. It's got nothing I, you, to do with I live in the country. You got nothing to do with St. John and St. Philip. I oh, it's St. John and St. Philip mm -hmm. because I live down St. Peter there, St. James, St. Peter, and I can't tell you when last. Oh, you see a open near meeting down that neighborhood that you live in. I think you, you, want, you want one down there? You know I ain't want one. I want to see one. I just want to say, really, I want one. That's about all. Oh, you know, we be going on St. Peter. It's so all, it's I, I you, want that. You be I want you come on your own accord. As you say, as they say, God send them. Mm -hmm. Watch this now and show you another vibe. I want you all to say, my attention one day. You will realize that these people will come in certain neighborhoods. And put up and got the little congregation and thing. But what about none of them may know I'm going to sign the lane? Mm -hmm. Sandy Lane, no one want to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. They ain't got nobody down that you can spread the word of God to. Mm -hmm. So they, they, there's news now, they turn around and say, oh, well, you know, well, um, I just go where God sent me. Mm -hmm. I just draw a reference. You ask God if you if don't so don't want some salvation too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They skip these neighbors so like, and a lot of times when you look now, a lot of these things, the old time vibes that they had, as you say, the advancement, you know, there's mm -hmm. people elevating you now, but they left in a lot that that you should get people to go to church. So now you you, 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 you come you coming from another angle now, far because Scorch is talking about how the church, the church, the breaking down and the falling away from religion mm -hmm. is a good thing. And you talking about the breaking away and falling away. No, that was away saying, from he, thought, he thought he'd be happy. Cause you know enough church. People like me say they can say no back in there, but a lot a lot of times that like, you see the, the same pastors gonna go and talk to you. It was got on a block and stand up and talk to the youth. So I remember when I camp on my block when I was hustling back in the day. You know what I mean? And they come and talk to me and give a vibe like, you know what I mean? Like, cool yourself, calm yourself, think before you do something. Like, some of you just want to hear a word in your head to make you think different. As a, as a, as a, I don't really want to get in a church and sit down really and listen to the man. So you're saying they, they, serve, they serve the purpose, a, a good purpose. Even even for you as a Rasta man, yeah, you saw some Some, benefit. some of them, uh -huh. not all, because, like, you know what I mean, when you look at certain church branches that they got, because they got so much different levels there. They got the well, no, he, his, his argument here, no, Scorcher, is really going back to what we were talking about earlier. He's saying, look, the church falling away and even though you are saying that certain negative aspects of the church will fall away too the, we do not have the organization to replace it with anything positive he's not seeing something coming and filling that vacuum mm -hmm. that the falling away of the church and the educational system is leaving I mean, and i don't even i don't even want to say that the church falling away because the church knows what has always been right the church structure strong don't get tapped the church structure church people well organized sunday to sunday then people got plan then people know what they're about you gotta give them that. They're dedicated and they're committed to what I'm dealing with. Now, my thing is, is that the interest, the interest, the whole, the grip that that would have had on the psyche, where you would have got a mother or a grandmother who would make sure that you go to church. You know, we have younger mothers who don't go to church. So if you as a mother, you don't have to go to church. Why would you make you try to go to church? Dying you, you don't have to go to church. 
You know where I'm coming from? So that, that has changed. Now what needs to, for me, what we're not seeing is um, the organization from us. And when I say us now, I mean myself and the people who um, chant quote unquote black power, the quote unquote conscious community, Adrian. You know what I mean when I say that. Mm -hmm. We are not as organized as we should be. And that is a problem. That is a problem. Because how do you inspire a youth? You know? Um, so you just talk. So you are not one of these people who blames the system or blames white people for the problems we're seeing today? Because mm. you know, that, that is a bit, that's a major issue. People say, well, you are black power. People are always blaming the white man for everything. No, I mean, there's some things that white people quote unquote, and we use that broadly, right? Because it's a loose, a loose term. Of course, because you got white friends. Okay. They play cricket for Wanderers. All right. You oh, you play cricket for Wanderers? I don't play for them, no. Uh -huh. But as a youth coming up, you're a cricketer. First division, but my play, my cricket for Wanderers, you understand? Mm. So I know enough white people. I know enough white people. And there are many white people, you know, that's this whole concept where we talk about old money or whatever the case is, where. You know, the position that they enjoy in 2017 is something that is more than two to 300 years old in legacy, you know? That is real. And there are some people who they've come to grips with that legacy, you know? They, you know, they may feel remorseful about it, but at the end of the day, it is still a legacy. They weren't there physically, you know, at that point in time. So we use white supremacy and we use that word and we say, okay, well, the white man, this, blah, blah, blah. But the bottom line really is self. That's the bottom line. So whether or not the white man or the Arab who really and truly, you know, a lot of people, I, I think the white man is really a scapegoat. Because the white man ain't as powerful as, it's all an illusion, you know? Because prior to the white man enslaving the black man, you know, Africa, parts of Africa were heavily you know, on the dress and on the slavery from the Arab invasion. This long before the white man come into the equation. But people don't want to talk about that. You don't Muslims, don't you know, parts of Africa. Slaves. The African countries that would have been divided long ago, between split between Christians, split between Muslim. You know, history is one of those subjects. You feel, here. You feel the history is relevant though? You remember you saw you said earlier about when speaking to a youth today. Mm -hmm. You you know you talk to him about something well, that's relevant to happening. This, this that, part this part this, 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 this part is relevant if we're talking about if it is that these people have contributed to the current condition of the black man. Mm. So for this particular point, history is relevant. You know, not as opposed to like if we're talking to youths. No, we're talking about you asking about the condition of the black man today. <coughs> the others. So and if the white man is to blame, so I'm saying partly yes, the white man is to blame. But outside of the white man, we also got going to what predated that. So we can't just stop at slavery and say with the white man, how the black man is slavery. Slavery exists before the white man, as in before the white man got into slavery, there was slavery before that. So I'm saying, if we can talk about slavery, you can't just talk about slavery as in you one part of it. One part of history Accept the holistic picture that is a vibe that was going on. So my thing is now ultimately, outside of what would have contributed to our condition, Slavery, this thing, that thing, whatever. Fine. So we at this black part is they're teaching schools. The, 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 the Muslims enslaving blacks. That I, I went to school. I never even hear about that in school, but Well, you won't really get that on the syllabus, really. So you gotta go outside no one check for yourself be <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Which ain't there wrong with that. I think a lot of people expect too much from the education system. I don't think their job is really to, you know, make us the sharpest knife in the draw. That's not their job. What's their job? Um, their job is to get us ready for the workforce. That's their job. Um, and I think, again, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because... Um, you was a real strange black power advocate, though, Scorcher. You know, I hear them talking that you very regular. A lot of people are very critical of the educational system and the lack of black history being taught and African history or how it's being taught just just this is in public schools in public schools yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I, ain't, I ain't in them I don't play that game usually. okay you know if, yeah. if it is that I really got an issue with what the public schools teaching my child uh -huh. I really and truly should go there homeschool them one or get a piece of money and put them in a private school right what I got if? options chief so what if what if what 
money if you don't got the necessaries to get all that done and you don't got no choice but the thing but you don't send, like send, you know. send, send them to public school and then pay my work after three o'clock I mean the enemy you know it, 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 it then whereas like or when you go to school before I realize I'm not funny the first thing they learn is about engineers she runs <coughs> and the letters mm -hmm. but it, it's constantly be hitting you with the, the nursery runs cold job for them and when you realize that you get older yo this thing is impossible these things just something like to put in your head as a temperance like bread lunch you know you got that bread mm -hmm. then you got back to school then you got lunch and then you go home for the evening mm -hmm. so in the process of learning all of these things is can just a lot of children money whereas that yo some children can't even get back to that point of learning something at like abc much as many thinking about some cold jumping over a moon. All them things so I think supposed to get moved out to schools a certain kind of way, you know what I mean? Then it's supposed to emphasize on that then see saw magic door under the London Bridge and all these kind of foolish things so that everybody got there that you I don't want to find these things that you can use than these things in life. You understand? You can use certain things in life like or for instance, when we was going to school and they're telling you about Christopher Calibus. <laughs> you understand? And these people, you really look up this people, yo, this man was a great explorer, but then you really find out what really ain't done. Later, the story starts sweet. Mm -hmm. But as the story gets longer and more thing and more drawn out, then you start really, well, this man was a demon though. By the time you learn that first form, by the time you get fifth form, like, yo, see Christopher Calibus, I would like to chop off your head. That's true. That's real thing. Mm -hmm. But when you was in first form, you tell yourself, man, yeah, this man's a good man. I look, I look up to him. You get the fifth form, like, yo, bring me here, let me saw off, you have a hot saw. Oh, he's a demon, you know what I mean? The queens and all that because that's why he's always asks you. So like, I always ask you this. I don't know if you got saying this about it. I just want to know why you read this way the King James Version of a Bible. Mm -hmm. Why it's set like this is everywhere you look, mm -hmm. and then they take it on to read the way to over and the chain certain texts and all kind of thing. So at the end of the day, we read a lot of people, they're really reading a real Bible or just somebody version of a Bible mm -hmm. because version. It's not the original. A virgin is like, a, you know, when you work something by a piece of paper, you say, Yeah, you got the dope. Okay, you can go along with that receipt. I, 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 I get the impression, Scorch, that these are questions that you ain't too, too, too concerned about. Are you right or are you wrong? No, not really. Because, I mean, I give you all this. I, when it, when it comes to religious and biblical debates and things, I just tend to skip over them because there are people alive, living as we speak, who they can't see, can't talk, can't hear. But they're living. They could jump in a river. They could go and touch a cat. You know, they could go a pet dog. You know, they could have sex and get children. But they can't read. They don't talk English. You know, there's so many variables to make these things not important. And we spend a lot of time debating and consuming these things. When really and truly, they're not important. But you know what you can why, why we talk to me. about them? They, to me. As they said, they send the missionaries and they see them a lot of these places like in Brazil and mm -hmm. like, all these places and I tell them, look, but this woman is supposed to really be living on a life like even though the people were surviving all that time. Then you come in with a Bible and I tell them, look, this woman was missing this part. There's a part of her life that when I'm missing, when I need this part in order to keep living. You understand? And then like, I don't know for what's is getting your mind to tell you, like, yeah, or this white man can be, majority time be a white man that's be a missionary, mm -hmm. you know. Whatever this white man come and tell me is the truth. So we go really start looking at this thing. Look at James Jones, how much people he killed in Guyana Bush and kill. You know what I'm How much people fought he out there. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Let me wake up the morning and say, like, you're gonna kill myself. They ain't one of us getting dead nor nothing. So but they just follow this man out there. So that's what we talk, like, re religious acts and like a lot of these religious people is coming here. It's, it's really got your, your head kind of fright. You like, consider Rasta religion, Rastafari nah, religion? Nah, Rastafari is a liberty, are you? Mm. It's how you live. It's your liberty. A lot of these people don't understand that. They just look at Rasta as a bunch of naughty yeah, I mean, they smoke enough ganja and it's a lot more to Rasta. I don't know. You can go down there and check my budget. I lick and them kind of Rastafari with that down there. And see, I lick the man that creates something out of a piece of wood that you can stand up and watch this rat. They ain't saying that about he can't do it. But when I let's do it, he's tell you about the reason he had the man got a a, a, um, a piece of craft down and he showed me the other night. I was looking at it from the, from the rear of it. The man said, turn it wrong. You know, this man, I can't remember when he told me he do it. It's like actually an eagle, like on something. I, like, they, it made me stand up and look. And then he was giving me the explanation behind it. So being around certain rustlers is like, you know that, look, it, like it's a whole different thing, a rustler, and yes, I'm not to hear you, as they call me, 
that is banal or marijuana is more to it than that. It's more to Rastafari than Bob. It's more to Rastafari than Tosh and all these men. It's a lot more to Rastafari, but a lot of black people don't want to learn it. They're stuck in the ways and believe in what other people come along and see it. You know what I mean? A lot of agents don't really check for very much other than unless it got saying the benefit with them, you know. You know what I mean? And that's where it is. Real thing. You don't look at Russell no religion. Ah man, you ain't seen a boy about there. Russell says and then you get ten by Europe on Sunday. And I got the vibes down there. Mm-hmm. You see how all kind of different vibes from Russell's down there, a whole different thing. But a lot of people don't look at it like that, you know what I mean? And for too long I see Russell's get down press a lot. You know, as a young man growing up. And it made me want to be rebellious. Because it was like these men can not like I remember Simon Peter and, and their man from that was doing four stuff and land. And then Russell Strong and I people looking at them like these men string at you like yo, but these men in dealing with near that. What the other people do. You were you were inspired as a young sister. Yeah, by Moses and, 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 yeah, and, and, and up in the hills and like, Andrew. Yeah, up in the hills. And men, I used to watch them and like, yo, these men are amazing how these money is short and like I remember you that God rest in, in, in the grave of you and Robert. My man used to drink no pipe water. My man used to get up every morning and throw it to the spring and back with some big gallons of water. And then men used to deal with it like that all the time. Real thing. And it was like, yo, it, it take more than just saying I want to be something to live like all these men. But there's no, no, what you're talking about is like the, the other end of the spectrum from what Scorch are talking about now. In terms of your, your, um, your view of the importance of organization mm-hmm. and business mm-hmm. and structure. Mm-hmm. And Farai here talking about his admiration for those guys who really burn fire on a lot of what you are talking about. Is that is that how you see it? I mean, again, the English language is such a funny language because for a man to not drink white water for a year and be so organized that he got he got the drums there, and he know what thing he got good, but he spring got them back there. I mean, there's a man that using a pipe water, you know. Right. So, he got to be more organized than the person that got a tap that could just jump up quick soon, go and turn on the tap and get the water. True. So, good point. structure, order, these things, these things that they're all relative. And to assume that a man ain't gonna order because he ain't gonna call it and tell is a dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and perception is often reality. Yes, we know that, especially in Barbados. Mm-hmm. The way things look, we assume that that is the way they are. But it's not always the case. So you see, you, you see, know, you you see the vendors there, and you assume that because they do not, they don't, they're not neatly rolled and and set up like um, people selling yams and potatoes and no come out the ground. The people ain't got time to go out, like how right. a massive go out, cold storage and line up. Come massive got people paid to follow them others and make sure that when an apple drop on the ground, it get pick up and put back in the perfect position to look nice and pretty to attract the customer. So if you understand the vending culture, you understand the vending culture. If you don't understand it, you don't understand it. Simple. You are you have a vision of what you would like to see. Where are you headed with what you're doing, all your enterprises? So they got Inferno TV. Catch a Fire is a subsidiary of Inferno TV. You also have Catch a Fire, the uh, the show, the mm-hmm. stage show. Every well, two I mean, weeks. well, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're involved mm-hmm. in that as well. Yeah. Um, what else? What else you got going on? Two four. Two four six goal. goal. Yeah. Talk about mm-hmm. that, please. Mm-hmm. Well, two four six goal. Two four six goal. That is something that we we are um, pushing now. Started last year as well. We're into volume number four, so it's it's an online audio release. You can check it out on SoundCloud. Right? You know, you can check it out on Facebook as well or on YouTube. Um, just two four six goal, as in the numbers two four six. That's the area code of Barbados for those who don't know. Goal, just as it sounds. G O L D. And what is two what two four six goal? Right. So this is a compilation of. Of music produced you know in Barbados some songs produced not in Barbados but they're all songs done by Barbadians across the genres of rap reggae dancehall R&B you know we push every other genre except soca right now well, you're you discriminating against Oka? Oh, yeah, bro. You know, that yeah. can say baby a lot of people, bro. You know, that can like, say baby a lot of people, bro. You know, pushing the walk-up music? It's not discrimination by any means. It's that I personally believe that Soka doesn't need Scorch or help. Oh. Every time we turn on my radio. What, 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 what are you that like, now coming up that say, you know what? You can't get up there and you say, like, you look through all the other avenues. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, the tank. Oh, no. Nah, you sing it, Soka? Yeah. He probably and, can and be. See you. He can't be that good. Man, no one mask. No one mask. You can't, 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 can't be that good. No one mask. You can't be that good. You see where that kind of soak. Let me tell you something. You see where that kind of soak. I'm a bitter. Uh huh. 
the people, the powers that be don't make sport the soccer chief. So if they got a talent out there, mm. that hard, I telling you, mm. they're gonna bust. How long can you the bus? How long? Uh -huh. Um, no, not very long. Very long. He carried sheep and tongue, and that for, wasn't really no, a, good, a good look. But most but that, people would have said, yeah, that, that, that was a big song. That was a big song. That was a big song. Me as a man, I make laugh in sport had it when it was in New York. I was like, oh, no, everything else, brother. You come in for a sec. Peter just said, just said, Michael with sheep mm -hmm. and tongue. You can mm -hmm. think about man. I even get to the round Steffi, slap Steffi for is a good pattern artist. crime. Because Steffi, let me tell you about Steffi for sure, and I also put that in context to you guys, is that, you know, there's always in any culture, in any society, you got mainstream mm. and you got the underground. And somebody like Stiffy, and they could call a thousand more artists in Barbados who who big in the underground. You know, the the song, the songs don't play on the radio. Call some names I mean. Um, then Malice, Jacoda, Ja yeah, Redis. Um, I even know Ja I know he's Farrell, a comedian. Blue Diamond. Um I mean, he's not artists they could call. I'll be top of my head. I'll take Cherish, mm. Short Assurance. These are all artists who got five, six, seven, eight songs right now in Barbados. Comfortable, you know? But, That's all. But, but they don't play on the radio or, you know, the music doesn't penetrate a space. So but it's uh, playing the underground. Children go up on the phone. What, People subscribe to the YouTube pages. What about yeah. um, what we become this fella? We in here, Crime Sign and, and, and Crab Soldier and them men. You know what them men was out? But they they first remember when they the other But that's the whole thing about it. Like, mm -hmm. to get out there, a lot you don't really it, hear it, it, in mainstream. You got a plug in. You got a plug in. It's like if you're listening to Alternative, you're an alternative fan, you love alternative music, what coming out new, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to attract to you. You're going to be on the pulse of. The latest alternative hit. You can listen to Mix 96.9. Well, you got a problem you know? as a businessman, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if you work business, mm -hmm. the businessman go over the market is. Mm -hmm. You know, say the people got a plug in. Mm -hmm. But the businessman can't call the people to plug in. Mm -hmm. The businessman got to go to the. People got, that plug in. The people, he got to go to where the people are. There's, 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 there's me personally now. So you're giving yourself mm -hmm. a real difficult task here now in terms of market. If people mm -hmm. are not. If, is it that people are not plugging in or or what? How come these names are not mainstream? Well, I mean, mainstream, again, is relative because well, what's, what's the population of Barbados now? About 300,000. Still? I didn't hear that for some years. Now. I didn't hear in 250. Oh, I thought yeah, it was yeah, a, no, 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 it's no, a 300,000. Yeah, not for the year 285. Okay, good. So let's assume that I'm an artist, Scorcher, yeah. I bring a song. I get it on iTunes, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And I want everybody in Barbados, every single person in Barbados is a foreigner or not, to buy my song for a dollar. Mm. That's a dollar US. That's six hundred thousand dollars that I can make, right? And <clears throat> excuse me, they got the producer, the whoever wrote the song. If you don't write the song, royalty split, whatever, whatever. So my, my point is really, is that when we talk about mainstream in Barbados, not about you fool you. In a mainstream in Barbados, it is impossible to have a mainstream. We use deep numbers for right in this social media world. And a million views is what, you know, somebody would take seriously as something that gone viral, mm. right? Yeah. So you mean to tell me that you can't even get a million views from the population in Barbados? So, what, so as a businessman now, why invest your time, energy, and money because in 246 gold because, if 246 because, is because, not making enough market? Because, Adrian, you would know full well. And you know you only asking me this here because you want to ask me. But you know the answer. Everything I, I can't money. be so sure. Now Everything about money. Okay. <laughs> Everything about money. You know what I mean? They got other ways. Because anything, anything, you follow you was falling in front of you for work. Because you remember when you was overseas? Yeah. You was the only man that you would message me on Facebook. Yeah. And some of that keep up the good work, bum. I remember, I, can't, I don't know if you can remember, but I remember Farai messaging me from New York where he said, you good with cameras? I think you don't want nothing, you good? I said, good, it cool. Mm. I don't know if you can remember that. That's when he's got enough different Facebook profiles and things. So that was okay. probably one of my million yeah, profiles. Yes, right? Uh -huh. yeah. And it's a case where I had to make a choice, Adrian, between going out there and shooting a fat fat where you can get action. Because I mean, before the internet really kick off two, three years, People would be more familiar with in front of TV from doing a lot of DVDs. 
DVD magazine. Like, we got, it was on, it was featured on one, and may actually go correct. if you want on it. Exactly. It so it was, it was more DVD vibe because it wasn't always the IG. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always the Twitter. It wasn't always the, the Steam that Facebook got now. It wasn't always the YouTube. You know, so we always had to find creative ways to get our content to the public. And that was one of the ways that we would do that via DVDs. And to create a buzz, um, 2010, 2011, 2009, eight, um, the kind of content we were covering would be, you know, the clash, Turkey and Kiba, you know, and there's a clash that was in Spike Stone, you know. Right. And that was, I would tell you, out of all the things I've ever recorded, I have never seen anything. They, I if they got viral in the DVD world, the yeah, DVD that, 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 was one of, that was one of the biggest things that, that I had to do. Like everybody don't want to see this. I was in New York and I had the uh, oh, yeah. somebody big, playing a DVD one. in New York for me. <laughs> that yes. was scandalous. It was scandalous. Yes. It was it was getting wrong, you know. Um, and coming out of that, I had to make a choice where you know you got your own life to live and you're pursuing your own levels of consciousness and you're trying to read and pursue this knowledge and you know wake up, mm. so to speak. That's the term. Wake up. You're trying to wake up yourself. And I made a choice where I said, well, look, I can't be on one hand, you know, promoting positivity and telling people, man, you know, holistic health, doing interviews about not getting vaccines and this kind of vibe and looking at the difference between religion and spirituality, you know, carrying the conversation in a mm -hmm. different tone. I mean, it was different. I ain't making the money from people running me down and harassing me for DVDs and I can't get no rest of God's hustling. The DVD main checking Inferno because my Corbin birthday bash was last weekend and the God Gate between now and Thursday got Friday's pay day and the one got on road by weekend. It was a vibe because the content that Inferno TV was pushing was what was quote unquote popular. Blingisha skinning out. They didn't shoot that. Make money. You understand where it coming from? Right. Right. So you just go and make a choice. The user artist, you do spoken word, you sing with Iron Pipe. And you guys know tomorrow if Adrian Green, next to DJ Simmons, next to Simon Pike, bring out a bashy soccer tune telling the girls, drink rum, show me at 6.30. Oh. Find a nice rhythm when I go on global, you know. Oh. That's shut down. Not, no. ne not necessarily, but you don't feel so. You don't feel so. Try it, Adrian. <laughs> try it. Try it then. Eh? If you don't feel so, try it then. Eh? Uh, look, let me call it. Adrian, don't want to try that. You don't want to try that. Don't want to try that. That ain't even match your suit at all. That ain't going on, yellow socks. So you going to make a choice then, Farrah? With an orange suit. That ain't even look right. But we talking about business. It, I, I, it I will put, business. I will put need to do some numbers, make some money. Make some money. Yeah, asking out to Adrian, that ain't working with our way at all, brother. Let me tell you. Go make a choice, Adrian. Go make a choice. You gotta make a choice. And if So at one point in time, mm -hmm. you were pushing a very different vibe to what you pushing now. I mean it. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I ain't gonna tell you no. My DVDs used to be raw, Chief. Sundays they got bike fast like there. So you find God where it was? God? From God? Mm, not really, you know. Not really. I always had God. That's the problem that you know we feed that God. I born with God, Chief. Mm -hmm. Every time I born, you get saved. What happened? Born with God. What make you change? You gotta save yourself too again now. Mm -hmm. So it ain't no matter all that save thing. Like, you know, yeah. 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 Me? Me? Huh? It's really easy, though. I can have you in this one. Don't worry, you my big I can man. Tell you what I can tell you what happened. You jump in the pool with a shark. I can tell you the truth. I can tell you the truth. It's like I tell you before, in the pursuit of knowledge and trying to wake up, I realized that I could leave home with my cameras and shoot something that I know within my heart is going to be a more beneficial, something that will last. 50 years because since I've started shooting Catch a Fair and rebranded Inferno TV to pursue different types of content, I've met people who resigned their jobs, you know, girls who used to work at the Harbor Road and, you know, they resigned our work and they got self, they're going to sell snacks by the primary school. You over us? And the feeling that that has given me, nobody can't pay me enough money for that. So to know that I would have put out an interview or put out a series of work, a body of work that would have influenced people in that way you to know, really take entrepreneurship serious and make bold moves. You know what I mean? This is what it, this That's what it, this is what it sounds like to me. You know mm -hmm. how people are saying, I was in the world sinning. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the feeling that I, I get. I the world one night. The feeling I get from having a relationship with the Lord is better than any sin I used to involve in. Yeah. This is what you I mean, sound, hold on, hold on. Uh, this is what you sound like to me. Uh -huh. It sounds like. Listen, man, I was making a certain sort of DVD, uh -huh. bashing and thing, but the feeling that I get 
from producing work that I believe is beneficial to my uh -huh. people is greater than any of the cash mm -hmm. that I was making back then. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, my, my you, my you. you draw a point. Mm -hmm. So that I mean, for me, I don't curse in from videos and stuff. Down for like I'm gonna ask, believe that. My <laughs> bag alone, my car is see if it's selling black paint. Ah, <laughs> anyway, I can never ask what happened, <laughs> not me. You Man, yeah, I get my boring. forward. Straight. Because people is need to get a point in the ear. <laughs> You understand? If I sit down and I be in now, you see Dory, mm -hmm. people will be like, okay, yeah, he's saying, yeah, I like how he's speaking, he's talking right now. But I might tell you, he's a jackass. So, so you don't yeah, feel. You draw different blood. So you don't feel, you don't feel, you don't feel that. Like, I mean, you could get to that if you want to get to that, uh -huh. the whole cursing thing. Because I, I yet to find, you know, you know, or get somebody to explain to me what is a curse word. Uh -huh. Or how we derive as a people to say, well, F U C K is a curse word. Mm -hmm. Right? Raw soul is a curse, right? And if you can edit that out. My man, talk, oh, talk. Right. So, so, you can no. right, so my thing is now, who decide that these are curse words? So I mean, it's like a whole, it's like a whole purge that the mind got go through when you're trying to weave yourself out of this madness. You understand where you're coming from? Mm -hmm. And that way you would not become stressed because you realize that most of these things is just... Shoo. But people saying, because let me show you, everyone was living in New York and a man was talking, man, I, I knew Raw soul as a thing. I said, my mom, what the rest of you doing? Mm -hmm. Man, laugh. Man, what like to hear you say that? Mm -hmm. And you're Jamaican, a little rich, I mean, you should fret me, so they will hear me, cause. Real thing. And like, why, you know, in Barbados, like, you get charged with that. The message, you get charged for cursing in Barbados. I remember one time my mom actually tell the police, man, yo, what the fuck you stopping me for? Mm -hmm. I was like, child, boy, we going to jail, boy, this man, what he going on, thing? In New York, York, York. In New York, yeah, when he was mm -hmm. in New York. Because you know in Barbados, you said so years ago to a policeman, yeah, boy, bangles, come, carry you down here, carry you on a box, get you pay a fine for using abusive language. But then he started to say, wait, hold on, he said, I'm charging me with using abusive language, you sit down home in a house and watch Eddie Murphy shows mm -hmm. and them kind of things. So, so what are you telling me I can't do it? Because I went here in front of you and we call him up on the TV. I remember um, somebody get locked up here, an artist would get locked up here for cursing, because he stayed. No, 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 he was weed. I can't remember who it was. It's Cobra. 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 Yeah, Cobra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thing. But the thing is, if he come on stage and he's a bomber clock, what does that mean in Barbados? You know what I'm saying? So he no, got no. Say, he got necessarily going on the F words and them kind of thing. But you know what I mean? He's a bomber clock. He actually mean Johnny. A lot of people didn't know. I didn't know all these things. Is that a, a Jamaican man to stand up and show me these vibes? Mm. So a lot of people is hiding behind that. They're talking about, oh, you curse. Like, yo, big man. If you don't like what he say, catch the bus and get off at a different stop. But your, trans stop your transformation has not turned you into a... Not me. But wait, wait, wait. Your transformation has not turned you into a choir boy. Mm -hmm. You see, the thing is, I, 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 still, I still like my clashes and things. I just say mm. that I had to make a choice between using Inferno television for one or the other, because it would confuse my audience. You understand where you're coming from? So it's just a choice that I made, but it doesn't mean that I won't clash, or I won't take Inferno songs and go and clash with Jerry Dan or, saying, or support a clash culture. I love the clash culture. You can date, don't you? Just it's, like, it's like your time. You know, it's like if you use a sports channel, mm. you know well, you choose to show sports. And or you find your, you find your niche and go down that road. That's that's both ways because so, again it's like why it's like why you don't play so on two four six gold, you know you already got the Beijing tubes out there you already got the herbal Beijing you know big respect to those guys you already got a team of people who follow popular entertainment that's what they call it popular entertainment now you use good places doing spoken word open mic session thing and sometimes I sure that you will not see a media host present many times why is that that is not popular entertainment that don't sell for people to to use it resources to send a cameraman plus the driver. Plus the report, that's three people that go pay it over time because most events culturally happen at night. Mm -hmm. So when a paper or editor sit down and realize, well, like, hmm, spoken word vibe, this, don't worry about that. But we but they got a big event, we may be a Jamaican artist, or they got a big event, a soccer theme fact going on that gonna attract a couple thousand people. Now that is the shot I want for my front page. But we live in a time where persons like yourselves really change the dynamic in Barbados because far right. With his blog, mm -hmm. get more viewers than many shows mm -hmm. on CBC. Mm -hmm. You with the Inferno TV, I mm -hmm. understand doing some pretty big numbers on Facebook mm -hmm. and thing mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. So now, the the media and who controls the media mm -hmm. is also shifting in Barbados and the attention. This thing with Sherry Ann Norris, the young lady, oh, yeah. the, the teacher, yeah. who um, 
And that was in that who was had the one? who had the, the vlog yeah. about the the parents needing yeah. to take care of their own dumpsy children. Mm -hmm. Right. How many thousands of views that got? Big, big set of views in a mm -hmm. short space of time. All these things are challenging the status quo and challenging the media. But you think about it a lot of times too with a lot of these things. People that have views and say, oh, people sit down and watch it. View some things is count for somebody click on it. Oh, when I watch it now, that account was a view, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. So it don't necessarily mean, all right, yeah, somebody might come and click on it, but then they're like, oh, I don't want to watch it. That's foolishness. Boom, I move on. But that's count as a view. Mm -hmm. So even though people are looking at these numbers and saying, oh, you're getting views, I see people that have 100,000 followers mm -hmm. and on Instagram, and mm -hmm. they don't even get 5,000 likes on the picture. Mm -hmm. So you just got that big number. But people no looking engagement. at that. But no engagement. When you mm -hmm. look at a lot of engagement, it's be way, way down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got a lot of engagement on your social media. Yeah, I mean, because. It, it came up social media. I learned from a long time ago that before all the youngsters you know, don't jump up on it and stuff like that. I really using it to get the big sponsors and them is that you got to keep pushing. You can't slow down. Like I mean, yeah, as a money stop for about what a year, about what two years, and I wasn't even with it. I was like, yo, you focus on iron yourself because, I, I, like I said, if I be, I can't come out and speak nothing strong. So I had to make sure I catch back myself. I was like. This happened at the right time. So you just got to keep that constant push with it. You just got to keep up with it because people's be, I remember your big man put on a video today, right? It's said today's Tuesday. Upload it Wednesday. You know how Friday people want another video? Mm -hmm. People messaging me, yo, when you put on that video, I just put one up there. But I know, I know that is happening though, far, right? You also had your own transformational moment too. I remember the TEDx video that you, the TEDx talk. Yeah, when I did TEDx in Barbados. Right? Yeah, something has shifted at some point in time for you too, similarly to Not only that, remember culture. you also had FNA, me and the guy, the Beijing guy, who plays the African. Right, yes. Remember, and most people, it was like, you know that, being as how people was on to me like that, people was actually casting the match on Yo, you don't get off a far right video. I can't like, no, 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 no. He's he like, yo, that's an art. He's a bitch. He just doing an art. But people mm -hmm. like, yo, you're annoying far right. I think people message the man and talk junk and things. So, yeah, he's got to, he's got to constantly go up that push. It's, it, it's something that, man, it's yours, it's yours. Nobody can't change it. Like, you tell myself, like, I could start, make, I could start making videos for 10 years and start, but you can still, you might got different viewers, but you can still have that. Mm -hmm. You can still have that real thing. But the TEDx talk that you did, when you mm -hmm. talk about the cursing, mm -hmm. tell me about that. Because that was a moment in time for you when you was reflecting on what you was doing. Yeah, I tell, I, I show you, it's like, yo, you don't gotta be like me, you could be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What I just do, that's me. Don't get it twisted, that's me, that's on my part. You understand? I don't want, I don't want when they doing this, I don't want just get sit down and say, oh, but I can just make a video with beer cast words in it. My cast words most of the time, like, yo, I, like, you were watching the doors and off, and they wing one and you jump right back up. That's what you see, that's what music they do. So I had a real news in when they cast it, like, yo, when they tell a man, like, yo, use a jackass, it come with an emphasis. When a man, like, gonna rape a child, like, big man, use a big stinking rapist, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then they would, but mix words. Like, I remember one time, I, I, I had a work, um, I didn't make a one called Go Kind. I'm like, what the? Like, like we just come up with these words, you understand? So, like, it was all that was all part of it, but still at the bottom of it. I ain't get to TEDx because I was nice boy. Them call me because I was BJ and Farway. Now, when you go and look at BJ and Farway, what do you think you're seeing? You think you're seeing the person at TEDx, mm -hmm. or you think you're seeing that person that started doing the blogs when he was mm -hmm. in New York? You can see that person, you understand? And I always tell myself, my foundation as BJ and Farway was built on that. So I can't change it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know yeah, I went on the radio. I had a radio show and all of that. That was another side of me too. Because I remember the man was telling me that, yo, the servers, <laughs> online servers are almost crashed. Because people swear by it. It was in cast that night. So so much people tune on online. <laughs> when they're on the radio, I think all people, yo, he can problem. cast. <laughs> people, like, there was really, I was like, yo, I, I remember, I can't say, yeah, I can't remember that so much of an audio radio blue in camera, the people radio and cast. I even met that man with sponsorship already for the CM radio show. They might ask me, so where is going on, eh? No, there is. So why say we live in a time? We, we live in a time where before somebody like you 
or somebody like you will not have had access to the people, the kind of access that you all have to people now mm -hmm. because the control that the, well, you, I don't want to use the word mainstream because you say we're going to mainstream in Barbados, but the control that the mainstream media had will not allow you to be seen. Can't be yourself. It, it can't be yourself. It depends too. It depends too because, I mean, we got to ask ourselves how it is that a man like Granville, you know, Stand up in Robert in Broad Street or Robert Street or Fairy Street, wherever it is he stand up. That's a very good point. With a with a loud speaker and keep enough noise and do it for seven days a week till he get enough followers and start a whole organization. That's a very and good point. And that's before Twitter and IG and YouTube right. and thing. He ran a cell phone was it? Right. Jarvie do it long before Man, Granville. Too. That's a very good point. And he was able to inspire millions of people around the world with a new spare pan, black dollies and a shit. All and right. different things, you know what I mean? I stand, so, I stand corrected. I ain't know it's possible. It ain't, it, ain't, it, it ain't not, no, it ain't not what the system wants, it's your will of and course. what you want to achieve. Kick down barriers. That's what you're you're saying. Yeah, for sure. Yes, sir. Because no, if, if the way I brought them, you will go tell me no far if that can be the end of you. If, if, the, if, if they're no. not internet in Barbados. The, it, the one that said it, it, it's part of what it's doing. Mm -hmm. But you can find some other ways that means of doing what I just do. Now, that's not like, like what's it? Right now, I'm making my, my original videos, but I'm doing this. Whereas, that, yo, I don't just want, like, people, you know, you know how like hogs, you have you how like hogs? People mm -hmm. that want to see her leg up on them, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, boy, you can't let it see up on nobody else. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I do this because of he. Because of this you here, mm -hmm. you understand? So you can highlight somebody else, mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. you understand? And it's go share. I mean, you share, it's build a bigger network because people is always remember what you do. Like for instance, we were on John Doe. In turn, John Doe, we was on John Doe show the, um, about the following week. I think before the video even went up, we yeah, were yeah, on yeah. John Doe show. Yeah, the next, the following so week, the week after. They went up, and then we went on John Doe show mm -hmm. because we went like the Wednesday. So the video went to choose. So, so there are examples of black people working together. So, so. Yeah, you can work. But that's the whole thing. We're showing people that. I just want to make sure ain't all yeah. doom and gloom. Nah, no, nah, ain't, ain't oh. all the way out there. You know what I mean? You can, of course, you can get, because like I say, life is like left and right. You're mm -hmm. born with left and you're born with right. You know, some people are born with nah. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's what you choose to do and how you choose to utilize it with the other people. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, some people ideas ain't gonna always click. You know what I mean? You, want, you can't work with everybody in the world. You can't like everybody. Like every shirt I got, you ain't got. Mm -hmm. So you're a different <laughs> person. You know what I'm saying? But you want to make sure I know that. Look, I can try to do that with people. You? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Real thing. So you just go work with yourself, man. You just go make sure that, you know what I mean? You got your, your, your thinking on. You want your thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Any last words for us, Scorcher? Last words. Um, what part? What part you want me know? Uh, I want, I want a revolution in Barbados, like tomorrow. That's what you want. What kind of revolution? Right, that what kind of revolution? So, um, when people hear revolution, you know, you tend to think about the guns and snap some politicians and kidnap some rich people and do this and burn down you camp shop right? break glasses and all these different things. You that, that ain't necessary yet. Yeah. Before before we get to that or even contemplate things like that, mm. we got so much other things that we could do that we didn't even do yet. Which so that mean that that may not even be necessary. May not be. Oh, may not be necessary. Mm. You know. So I know people overly concerned about the guns and the crime that happening in Barbados right now. All these different things. You know them is things that are worthy of discussion. Yes, mm. but I figure right now we need to make sure that if Susie got a salon and you know Susie got. That's the long rent to pay. Susie so got she staff to pay. Make sure that if you some boy that's got to a salon, that you make your best effort to support Susie. Because when you support an entrepreneur, when you make a conscious effort to redirect this black dollar, that's a powerful Adrian. That is when we can start to see real changes. That is when we can start to see power being exhibited amongst black people. That is my main thing. They got other things. That I could tell you about. I got other things that we could talk about to last the next week. But for me, right now in Barbados, that's the main thing. I see a lot of people right now out there taking that leap of faith and getting into entrepreneurship. Everybody got a car, wash your bed, open out. You know what I mean? I see a man up on the highway the other day doing pineapple chow. Uh, Marie, that's part of the African Heritage Foundation. You got the coconut vendors. You know? So if people cannot see 
that black people in Barbados have made a conscious effort to break away from that norm. I just going to school, you know, getting a good job, let your grandmother advise you to work for 35, 40 years, get a good pension, retire and die. That has been the plan of the black man in Barbados and the black woman for the last how much ever years. And I'm saying that the young people in Barbados have made a decision to down away with that. They ain't dealing with that no more. That one day, look. They ain't book that life no more. They're not about it. So what we need to do is realize that the ship sail, they ain't panda vibe no more, and make sure that if you got children in school, make sure you got barbershop courses going on, make sure you got technical and vocational subjects going on, make sure you met the fella that doing woodwork and technical drawing and metal work. Don't just put he there because he deviant and because you perceive he to be a bad boy. And you say, well, look, I ain't letting you do no physics. You got to do woodwork. No. Make it a choice where you're pushing that child in the direction that he wants to do with work because you realize, my good with the hands, boy. All right, we gonna let you do some some vocational subjects and see where you work and let you do some painting, let you learn about tiling, let you learn about technical drawing. You may want to be an architect. I don't know what you plan, but let me just channel you and see what's going on. Fill you out for a year or two and see what's going on. That's the direction that we need to go with the youth right now in Barbados. To me, that's the most important thing right right now. Don't worry about the guns, don't worry about all the different things because. They got crime all over the world. You always know what I mean. Like, Barbados don't make guns, far right? We ain't got no gun factory, but we, you know? I know the older fellas in Barbados, you know, the men that are 60 and 70 and 80, them probably will know how to make a gun more than these youngsters because of the, the industrial society that Barbados once was, you know, with the harp gun being here and, you know, we had enough. Back in the pipe gun days. You know what I mean? We had enough no, of that expertise. Them, thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, pipe gun but days. But outside of that right now, Adrian, the main thing that I want to leave with the public right now is um, to follow Inferno TV on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Let me plug that. Inferno yeah, right. TV. Very that, easy yeah. to find. Make sure you guys get online and support the movement. Um, and secondly, just... And share it too. No, just follow it, but you got to share it. Because, you know, you got the follow option, but you got to share yeah, it too. Because when you sure. share it, they know... Yep, you don't go necessarily go on that. Man, you know, it's following for another TV, but you tell your friend that when you forget. But if you go on your wall mm -hmm. and you tag a couple of people, fully engaged, right? Yeah, you boost the thing, you know. That's what it is. Two forces, like school, and share support this, the yeah. artists, you know. And if you got $50, don't feel no way. Don't let nobody make you feel like you're no racist or nothing. Spend $49.99 with your brother or your sister. And one cent is out of commission now. So that one saying really for nobody. Yeah, toss one, down one dollars you toss down the wall. Yeah, one dollars though. Right. Toss when that's you want to win that you can push um that one down there stand in the wall too. Done to <laughs> But yeah, bless up. You you ready to say that? Man, no. Thank you very much, Scorcher. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I really appreciate through, the invitation. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. You must come back, huh? Yeah. Bless. The invitation will be extended again, and we hope to have you back in yeah. the boiler room with Scorcher. Yeah, definitely. In the boiler room. Yeah, it's Real been thing. Real thing. It's been good. Give Hulk thanks. Hulk and Bud.